pretty day, but gee, the neighbors sure are noisy today. Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're in Vegas Pro 18, and I'm excited to tell you about Action VFX, who I've joined with to make this tutorial today. The cool thing about Action VFX is they do all sorts of awesome effects. You, they, their promo kind of speaks for itself here on the website. And uh, we're going to go through some of these over time and do more and more of them. And the great thing is there are a lot of free ones, not just paid ones. Anything that you have downloaded from them in your account, you have access to. So you don't have to worry about storing it on a hard drive and what happens if you lose it and things like that. So I've already got this downloaded and prepared uh, to use in this clip. I've done a lot of pre-prep work. I've done uh, some touch of coloring and I've done a lot of sound design and everything because it's kind of a complicated a little small little plot I'm putting in here, but I needed a good reason to have a champagne glass break. So I'm going to drag and drop the champagne glass into my effects here. And you can see just by just by putting it in my timeline, there's a lot of cool things about this already. One, uh, it's, it's pre-composited, so that's not black. That's just the the glass itself. So uh, it's almost going to be drag and drop. There's a few things we're going to do to touch it up and give it that extra presence in the scene to make it feel real uh, but this already just has just ready to pop in here first thing we're going to do is just find where this needs to be in the timeline then we'll worry about everything else so we're going to kind of do the sound design first to inform where we're going to put everything so let's see that gunshot's really loud gonna quiet that gunshot a little bit Almost. Okay, and then like a near immediately after, but not exactly after, I want the uh, glass breaking. All right, so now we've kind of got a spot where uh, we know this is going to happen. I. Let's see. Let's make sure I'm not reacting before the gunshot. I am actually. So let's let's slide this back just a little bit. Now we can always tighten that up later. But now that we have where this is going to be, all we need to do is kind of match the moment where this breaks. I can select right at the beginning of uh, where the glass breaking actually happens, and I can find the spot up here and just drag to it the the frame it breaks on. So now. If Vegas is a little laggy, uh, you can drop to draft to make sure you see it correctly. So you can see how that's going to come together pretty well. So now let's go back to best full. If you, you don't have to work on best full. I like to do it for the tutorials because that helps everybody see what's going on the best. Now the next thing we need to do is to size this appropriately. So this is a giant glass that is not quite on the table. Very easy way to do this is to just grab the picture and picture effect drag and drop it on here. You can also do it, I want to be clear, you can also do it through the event pan crop. Uh, we're not going to do it through the event pan crop for ease of use, but if you decide to do it through the event pan crop for any reason, you can. And I'm going to set it right about here and let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, I'd say the size of the glass a little small. What I can do is make it just a touch bigger. Okay, and now notice a couple of small things. The glass itself, it stays mostly on this table. You have to have a table that's shot at this angle, actually, but uh, it's not hard to do. I just kind of eyeballed it and it worked out great. Now what we need to do is extend this glass throughout the rest of the scene. And we have a frame here where the glass is entirely full. And that's all we need because the glass isn't going to be moved or touched. We don't have to have a double or anything else. We just need to grab this frame. So there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, you could just hit saves the snapshot and save it as a PNG so it saves everything if you have it soloed uh, because once we solo this track now we only see this backgroundless image but the problem is is something about a PNG when it compresses it there will be a small color change so one of the best things to do is to actually just grab a single frame of the footage with your event uh, with your loop region here 
uh, make sure you just grab the frame where there is no break and then go to file render as an image sequence and render it as a TIFF. I've already done that here and once you re-import it into your project you'll have a TIFF uh, that is ready to go with no background. Now TIFFs are compressionless so there won't be as much of a color change or anything like that. So now we can see from frame to frame there is no change within the glass. I'll show you what happens if you use a PNG if you just do the quick export. There's actually the glass gets darker for some reason. and we don't want that. So now that we've got the correct image created, now we can look through our whole footage and we can see this glass sitting here the entire time. And that's pretty great. We need to cut off where the glass isn't supposed to be seen behind this. Uh, and that's simply just a Bezier mask. Let's go ahead, select the Bezier mask, just grab a square, drag it onto the footage, and we need to invert it to where the mask is, doesn't show the glass. And so now we just want to make sure that this mask is over here on the edge, right next to uh, this, this pillar. So now there's no more glass showing up in front of the pillar. So that is an easy fix. Now we can add some ambient inclusion. So I, this is perfectly filmed in a way to keep that in mind where I don't have to recreate shadows. Now, there are ways to do that, to entirely recreate and move around shadows. I've covered that some in other tutorials, but for this one, I wanna show you something super simple. All you have to do is go to your, and we've talked about this effect before, we're going to go to layer dimensionality and we're gonna grab a drop shadow with subtle opacity. Uh, and so opacity, opacity, however you want to say it. Um, and so now when I drop that into the track, uh, what we can do is we actually now have a shadow that's generated. Now the shadow is not going to be perfect yet. We're going to have to do uh, a couple of fixes here. Uh, but I do want to show you what it looks like with and without. So first off, let's go edit this effect here. I'm going to click back on it in the timeline. Double click on the name. And uh, with this, we can just, it'll just kind of generate a drop shadow. That's the ambient occlusion. That's just, that's just you know, where light's blocked just by something, touching something. And um, if we take it all away or add full opacity back, you can see the shadow more so. Let me just make this bigger. Take it away, add it back. You can see that it does help the scene some, but you gotta be really careful with it. And uh, there's some shadows where it doesn't need to be because there doesn't need to be any shadow on the brick, just on the table. That's super, super fixable. Um, but we're gonna talk about that in a second. So first let's just get the shadow looking correct. Uh, I have a whole tutorial about layer dimensionality, but because we have the type drop shadow, uh, that's gonna already kind of handle a lot of the work for us. We're gonna make it very, very, very subtle, very subtle. And you'll notice too that the drop shadow will move with the image. So let's up it so we can see. And that's one of the things that makes it so great is now we don't have to keyframe and make all these little individual shadows. It'll kind of do that for us. Uh, but we just need it very subtle, very, very subtle. That'll give it that extra piece like it feels like it's in the scene. Uh, and we can actually change the light location too. Um, kind of raise it up just a little bit, just kind of make sure it stays underneath it, uh, matching the sun a little better. Um, Cause I want, I want the shadow to be directly underneath. So between these two setups, you can change where, what angle the fake light is coming in from and where this drop shadow will appear at. And I'm going to, blur it just a little less so that way there's actually just less shadow there we go that's a much better all right so now that we have that on the whole track that applies to this as well so now we got the same shadow throughout but you'll notice 
And that'll look a little bit more exact and timing once uh, I have it rendered out. So now let's get rid of where the shadows don't need to be. This is pretty simple. All we have to do is go back to our good friend, the Bezier mask, and we can drag and drop this square here to our layer dimensionality. And as long as it's after the layer dimensionality, uh, we can select mask effect. And now you can see that when the mask is there, you have the effect so that our drop shadow comes back. So is there a little darker, a little not, a little darker, a little not, a little darker, a little not. And so we can drop our Bezier mask over this table here. And now we don't have any shadows where we don't, not supposed to have shadows. Let's arrow through, see how it looks. See, the shadows only appear when the glass is on the table. So that's a lot of fun. Now, uh, one last thing you might want to do is you can actually go to your effects here and you might think oh that's a little too white or it doesn't look quite the white color or whatever so if that's not the right color then what you want to do is just go to your color corrector just grab the basic color corrector drop it on your track here uh, put it after everything and then um, now you can see that you can actually change the color of the glass uh, pretty easily if you hold control as we talked about in our color correction tutorial this gives you more control over it so you don't move it so fast and what we can do is there's probably just since it's outside maybe just a touch more blue from the blue sky uh, touching this glass so let's go ahead and start with that just sliding the blue over just a hair directly to the blue and I think that kind of matches the scene just a bit better and uh, also here too we have the gamma one thing that you in your scene you may have different is the gamma. So the gamma you can make the glass dark or very bright. Uh, depends on how much light you have on your scene, especially if you have other glassware in your scene as a reference you can match that. Uh, but the gamma is where you can really help with that shine if it's got a lot of shine or not. I'm gonna up the gamma just a little bit because I am outside. And let's see, without versus with. Some very subtle changes but I think that kind of gives it a little more presence in the scene and a little more of the right uh, color it's supposed to be. So as one final tweak uh, I'm noticing I do like the shinier glass. I think it's definitely more present in the scene, makes it look more real. But uh, something about the glare, it's just you can't quite see through it like you normally would. So this is the track opacity. All you have to do, since all of our uh, champagne stuff is on the same track, all you have to do is drop the opacity just a hair, just a touch. And now the whole thing will be a bit more see-through, have a bit more realism to it maybe maybe about 93 from all right so that's how to use action vfx they got tons of stuff like that and you can shop through my affiliates link if you want to help out this channel like if this video helped you out subscribe if you're looking for more videos like this one remember they have free stuff too and one of the many reasons why i'm excited about working with them more in the future thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time